Good morning, GeoDNs. This is Mike Horton, project creator of the GeoNet Network. And today here in our office in Santa Clara, we have Guang Ling, CEO of Rover Network. Welcome, Guang. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. Guang, could you give us a quick introduction to yourself and also to, to Rover? Yeah, uh, my name is Guang Ling, and the co-founder of CEO uh, of Rover Network. And the uh, Rover is a deep in project that focuses on collecting and uh, processing the 3D data on the street and public space with large scale and uh, high accuracy. Um, people may ask uh, why we collect such data, because this data is uh, essential for autonomous driving and uh, ADA system. Uh, in the Web2 world, uh, there are so already there are so many companies uh, they are uh, doing this job. Uh, but their methods are clunky, so mm -hmm. that's why we are here to use the DPU method to solve their problem. Yeah. Very cool. What about yourself? Where? How did you get into the field of HD mapping? Uh, yeah, uh, because uh, before I founded the Rover, uh, I also uh, worked worked in the LiDAR company for seven years, and I also uh, ha has the experience uh, uh, in the autonomous driving and HD mapping. So. Um, be because you know uh, we see the power of deep in, so that's why we're here. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So I mean, I, I've seen now a couple of different protocols in the mapping space, and I think it's a mapping and data collection is su super resource intensive. Obviously, Hive Mapper is the the best known protocol, mm -hmm. and you know been super innovative in collecting large scale street level data. There have been a few other protocols giving it a try. What's going to be your special thing in, in this space, and how are you different from, from HiveMapper? Uh, first, the HiveMapper is, is a great uh, project, and, uh, but we are different. We have different hardware, and we have different data products. And uh, I think HiveMapper is going to be the Web3 Google Map. But mm -hmm. for, for us, uh, our vision is to collect the, uh, the large scale 3D data for AI training, especially for the, for the spatial AI because, uh, and, uh, and the robotics, for all robotics. Uh, because you know, uh, nowadays it's very easy to collect uh, the 2D data. Uh, for example, the, the text, images, video, audio, uh, audios and videos on internet and the social media, but it's very difficult to collect the 3D data. I mean, the authentic 3D data on internet. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's why uh, we are going to collect the such data uh, for our data customers. Yeah, we've seen that too. We've seen that in the Web2 space, the folks collecting true 3D data with LiDAR, that yeah. it's very valuable to, to what they need to do, but it's just super expensive. I mean, can you give some kind of estimate of what you think it typically is costing folks to collect 3D uh, high accuracy geospatial data these days? Uh, yes, because a different place and a different price for the collecting the 3D data. And usually uh, uh, in the Web2 world, collecting the 3D data on the street, uh, usually over $5,000 uh, per kilometer. Wow, yeah. $5,000 yeah. per kilometer. Yeah. I'd like to get paid that for driving. <laughs> <laughs> now, you brought with us you a couple of the devices. Actually, this is my first time to actually see the light cone. It's a yeah, pretty... Yeah. Pretty amazing piece of hardware, uh -huh. but let's first start off with your OG device. This is the tarantula. What is it? What is, what's its function in the network? Yeah, uh, we have these two types of hardware. Uh, this one we call it uh, tarantula X, and uh, actually it's an RDK receiver, and we use GeoNet uh, network. And uh, uh, people use this hardware to connect uh, the, their uh, smartphone uh, while Bluetooth. And uh, this hardware will make their smartphones uh, positioning very high accuracy. Yeah, mm. 20, two gotcha. centimeters. Yeah, and but but the the people use their smartphone to collect uh, the two D images in front of them. Uh, but this guy, the, we call it uh, a light cone or LC, and uh, it has the the lidar inside. You can see here yep. the the auto grid lidar and the multi channel. Uh, I think it's a one hundred twenty six channel lidar, and uh, yeah, so it can collect the, the authentic three D data on the street. How do you think this guy, I mean, the data that comes off this between the, the camera and the LiDAR and the positioning, how do you think it compares to the quality of data, say, collected by a traditional mobile mapping system or a Google Street View car? Same quality and even much better. How would it be much better? Because, you know, uh, this LiDAR and the camera, you know, we, we are using the uh, card edge 
the the technologies. You know, uh, because Google uh, built their or or traditional uh, mapping company built their uh, uh, professional cars uh, for years. I see. Yes, and uh, there are not so many uh, Google's mapping cars around the world. Okay. Right. So, but we are using the deeping way, deeping method. I we expect thousands of. Uh, contributors use this gotcha. this kind of uh, hardware to collect data. So it's a combination of the really cutting edge lidar yeah. and camera system, yeah. high accuracy GNSS, and then the fact that you're going to have quite a lot of vehicles being able to map the space. Yes, that you're going to get this really super accurate, super yeah. high quality data product. Yes. So yeah, I've heard that um, you know the the basic mapping rewards for this guy are one. Point. point per yes. kilometer, per, and yeah. one point is is going to be at least one rover. Is that right? Yes, correct. Great. Right. Yeah. So, can you talk a little bit about how this, what the rewards are going to look like for for this guy, and how that's going to work? Uh, because you know, uh, we have basically a reward uh, mechanism for our contributors, and uh, that that basic, basic uh, rewards is much higher than this guy. And uh, second, uh, we will divide the, the, our areas uh, with uh, urban device uh, areas or the, the rural device uh, areas. Okay, so uh, in the urban uh, areas, uh, people will earn more about token. Uh, gotcha. Earn more token, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So yeah. you think it's going to be like 10 times higher or even more or just it, depend? That, that depends, that depends. Mm -hmm. But basically the reward is 10, 10 x mm -hmm. yeah. So I know that the first batch of these, there was 50 of them. They sold out. Um, yeah. What's going on with the second batch? Uh, yes, you know, we, we already sold out the first batch of 50 units. And uh, we, uh, our, our initial plan is to deliver by the end of uh, March or the early April. And after that, we will evaluate the test results. And, uh, and then we will start our second batch pre sale. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, well, we yesterday. Uh -huh. Took this thing out for a quick spin around uh, my house and okay. collected some 3D data, and it is really pretty amazing. And we'll show a little clip of that in in the podcast here. But it was very easy, very smooth. Turned it on, and boom, got the data. And there you go. You have a 3D HD map of your yeah. of your home street. So I really think when these things get out there in mass, it's going to really transform the whole 3D data collection business. And it's really exciting to see uh, Guang, you working on this so hard and uh, mm -hmm. bringing this. I think it's going to benefit both uh, all the folks in autonomous, all the folks in robotics, as well as a lot of traditional geospatial mm -hmm. applications that have you know, really been spending a lot of money on 3D data collection. So yeah. really appreciate your, your help in transforming the, the, the geospatial space uh, alongside GeoNet and many of the other super cool deepened projects that are out there. And with yeah. that, that's kind of a wrap for today. And I look forward to seeing everyone back next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I wish you happy mining. Cheers. OK, thank you. Cheers. GeoNet, mine the sky.